this was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touched air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I am your host, Tony Merkel. Thank you for being here. If you've had an encounter or a story you'd like to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. And if you want more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button and become a member today because we offer an extra show every week on the website on Thursdays. And every once in a while, we come out with that overtime show where you hear the first half of the show here on Tuesdays. And then right away on the website, the second half is available in the overtime segment. And if you want to be prepared for that emergency in your life, you never know when it's going to come up, but everybody gets that emergency that pops up. Go to preparewiththeconfessionals.com. There we offer emergency supplies and emergency food that will last you up to 25 years on the shelf. So if you want to get prepared for that emergency, go to preparewiththeconfessionals.com. Now, today we have Lindsay coming on the show, and Lindsay was a very interesting conversation. First off, she says that she has very similar experiences to Melissa from episode 175, It Dragged Me Down the Hall. If you remember that episode, it's a very dramatic story. And Lindsay shares some very parallel, similar things, including hearing that windmill sound before the paranormal activity kicks up. It was a very interesting conversation. She also talks about... What I guess is probably more along the lines of ET abduction or something abducting her, but she goes into these theories of it being more in the lines of a matrix kind of thing. And in this interview, she talks about her interactions with these entities, them telling her that they're here, they exist, and that they want her to know that. And her being warned that something is coming in the future she needs to prepare for and start growing food underground. It's a very fascinating conversation. I know you guys are going to enjoy it. So let's get to Lindsay right now. All right. Today we got Lindsay on the show. Lindsay, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for uh, letting me vent with you here <laughs> before we started recording. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I was sitting here and I'm yapping and yapping. I'm like, wait a second, we're not even recording. I'm, I'm probably just yapping your ear off. And she's like, are we ever going to do the interview, dude? So uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, I've been spending the entire day with my son and he's, you know, two and a half. So it's nice to talk to an adult, I guess. So. <laughs> hey, I have a three year old. I can relate. And I know you guys have your hands full with the new baby and everything. So yeah. congratulations. Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's been, uh, awesome. It's been busy around here with the children, but um, it's great though at the same time. So Lindsay, you have, uh, it seems like it's lifelong experiences. And I often say that a lot with people, but it, the longer I do the show, the more I realize that a lot of times people who contact me, uh, it's 
tends to be a lifelong situation with multiple experiences, not just a, I was driving down the highway, I saw a UFO, and that's the only weird thing I saw in my entire life. Uh, and that's kind of your situation. You have a lot of stuff that happened in your life. And uh, it's like, lifelong UFO paranormal type experiences. And I know you and I were talking earlier and you said about how you believe, or at least you feel that the UFO and paranormal are related. Maybe they're the same thing. I'm not sure exactly how you described it, but if you could walk us into these experiences you've had in your life and just start from the beginning and just kind of guide us through the story of how this stuff unfolded for you. Okay. Um, Let me go ahead and just start with like a brief family history. Um, Because sometimes people who research UFOs kind of connect some of these things. Um, so for the people who are out there who do that, um, my great grandmother on my mom's side was full blooded Cherokee. My great grandma on my dad's side was full blooded Blackfoot. Um, I have type O negative blood. I have blue eyes and I have red hair. (laughs) Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there who feel like the O negative blood is connected to extraterrestrials. Um, so I figured I would just throw that out there for them. Um, as far as I guess my existence goes, I'm the only baby that my mom was ever able to have. So she kind of calls me her little miracle. Um, and right, she never got, really had, I have one question oh. before we go any further, because I don't want to forget to ask you this. Do you know how many kids your mom tried having before she had you? Uh, she carried twins and if I'm not mistaken, she had another child that she was pregnant with and then me and then another set of twins that she lost after me. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to ask that because I wasn't sure maybe later on in your story, it might you know come back where it might be useful information. Okay. Okay. Um, she said she doesn't recall having any experiences around that time or anything. Um, I definitely asked. <laughs> so... Before I can even recall my experiences, she did tell me when I was about two years old, um, I had a serious freak out. I, I guess I was in my crib and we lived in an apartment and she said, I started screaming bloody murder and she came in the room to check on me and see what was going on. And I wouldn't let her touch me. I wouldn't let her pick me up or console me in any way. And she couldn't figure out what was going on. And my dad came home. Um, He thought maybe she had beat me or something. So they took me to the ER and he was like, what is going on? Like he he really was like freaking out. Like, why is my kid acting this way? Uh, The doctors checked me out. They said nothing was wrong with me, sent us home. And later that day, I guess they asked me why I had behaved that way. And I told them that I saw something like a clown or something outside my window. I didn't know how to put it into words, but something was at my window. And so that is what set me off and caused me to have like this huge meltdown. I was a mama's girl. So for me to not let my mom pick me up, something had to have happened. (laughs) Um, And I guess that's, that's the only one that she really told me about before I can remember. Um, Starting when I was about five years old, I started seeing weird things that I didn't know how to explain. Um, I had an aunt, her name is Jenny, and we used to talk about angels and stuff all the time because I told her one day that I saw a rainbow person sitting next to her on the couch and she just equated rainbow person with angel. And so that's what we referred to them as. I never really saw the angels or rainbow people do anything other than like just sitting or walking next to somebody. They never talked to me or anything like that. I could just see them. Um, at that same aunt's house, I had a cousin named Jennifer. Jennifer and I were like best friends more than cousins. And we were always playing together, um, just pretty much doing everything together. One day, she was outside swinging me around in the yard and we both got dizzy and fell down uh, like kids do. And I remember over the house, we started to see like an airplane or at least what we thought was an airplane fly over the house. Um, As it was moving towards the garage, we kind of looked at each other like, what the heck? Because 
the airplane was round. <laughs> it was round, and on the outside, it had a row of like red, white, and yellow light. And then in the middle, there was one big white light. And we just kind of looked at each other and we were like, that's kind of weird. Um, that's the weirdest airplane I've ever seen. And we laughed and then we started playing again. Um, I don't remember anything ever happening in that situation. We just saw it. Um, moving on to when I was about eight years old, I had a really terrifying experience. Um, I lived in an apartment with my mom and at the time she had a girlfriend and they had a room upstairs and I was downstairs. One night they decided they're going to have some friends over for like a game night. And so they told me to go upstairs and sleep. They had a water bed up there. And <laughs> you know, when you sit on a water bed, they roll, um, just keep that in mind for later whenever I tell you what happened. All right. So I'm in there laying down and it's three o'clock in the morning. I thought my mom was trying to wake me up like early in the morning to go do something. And I was kind of irritated, but basically it felt like somebody took their hand and slapped the side of the waterbed and you could feel the water roll to the other side, hit it and then roll back. And then it just stopped. It didn't roll anymore which is really odd for a water bed. Um, I looked over at the foot of the bed and I saw like a really huge, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a huge, dark, smoky, it almost looks like a cloaked figure. And that figure started to move very rapidly back and forth across the room, like at the foot of the bed. And I felt really heavy. I felt like I couldn't move. Um, it was hard to breathe. And when that thing appeared, and this is where I connect with another person on your show, there was a noise associated with this. And I didn't have really the words to describe it until I heard her story. It sounded like a windmill. And I know you've got to know who I'm talking about. This that's, that's, like I something. think that's who the lady we were talking about before we started recording, Melissa from 175. I think that's, I think that's who you're talking about. <laughs> it, it's just a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh noise over yeah. and over. Episode 175. It dragged me down the hall. So I laid down and all of a sudden, wide awake, I heard this windmill, like noise, windmill, sorry, like sound. It was like this womp, 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 womp sound that just got louder and louder and faster and faster. And I was terrified. I'm like, what is this sound? And suddenly it was as if I were being dragged. It was like my bed had turned into a conveyor belt of sheets, like... I was being dragged on my bed, but my bed was going on for miles and miles. And then it would stop. And then it would start again a couple minutes later. And in between, I'm like, what is happening? Like, I'm awake. What is going on? I am getting more and more afraid. And then it happened again. That want, want, want sound started. And I was pulled from the bed. And I was being dragged down the hallway of this house. And in this house, it was all brand new hardwood floors, the kind that's like really lacquered, so it's super slick. And I'm being dragged and I am grabbing onto the, the door frame. I'm clawing at the floor and I'm on my stomach being dragged by my feet. And whatever it was, dragged me into the living room. And in the living room, I had these giant cathedral ce ceilings and they were really high up. And whatever it was flipped me over and was in like the corner of my living room ceiling. And at first its head was turned away and its body's like hands and feet are clinging to the corner of this cathedral ceiling. And then its head just turns around to look at me. And it's the same mouth, these huge rows and rows of teeth from ear to ear and this really terrible smile and the same face that I had seen under the dresser when I was a kid. And it came down from the ceiling and that like towards me. me. 
And it almost felt like I was dying. I, I don't even know how else to describe it. Like I just got weak. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I couldn't talk. I couldn't get away from this thing. And when it finally stopped, I looked at the clock and it felt like it was only like two minutes later. If that it was three thirty, So the thing had been in the room for half an hour and I, I don't even know what all happened. Like it just, there's got to be missing time there because it literally felt like it was just two minutes. So, I mean, I still hear that whooshing sound sometimes. And I still get the heavy feeling. I, and I can feel like something is watching me. And when I get that feeling, it's so weird. I start to pray now. Since I started listening to your show and I've heard other people say that they've said, hey, or Jesus, please make it stop. And it stopped. I tried it. It works. <laughs> it works. Wow. Yeah. But back then I didn't know to do that. <laughs> um, let me think. The next thing that happened, it was just a real brief sighting. Um, I was about 10 years old. And this was a UFO. Uh, me and my cousin Jessica in Texas were jumping on her trampoline. And we just kind of sat down. We were catching our breath. And I saw what I thought was like a green shooting star. And we watched it. It was real quick, you know. And I was like, man, that's cool. And no sooner than we were both like, yeah, that was me. It came back. <laughs> it came back in the other direction. And it flew back over us. Uh, it didn't stop or anything like that. It was just like a very brief here and there. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. I've never had an explanation for that one. And then um, when I was about 14 years old. Actually, you know what? Let me go back. Uh, I stayed the night at that cousin's house one night. Um, she was another one that I was really good friends with. Um, not just cousins. We used to hang out all the time. And when I stayed the night at her house, um, I would sleep on a cot in the middle of her room. And then her bed would be on the opposite side of the door. So I'm between her and the bedroom door. Um, she had a lot of nightlights in her room. She was kind of scared of the dark. So I could clearly see everything in her room. One night, I remember just kind of having trouble sleeping and I looked towards the door and I saw her walk in the room and I thought, okay, she just got up to use the bathroom, you know, whatever. And I watched her walk from the door to her bed and lay down in the bed. But the weird thing about it was she was already in her bed. She laid down into herself. So you're I'm not a hundred percent. <laughs> so you're saying you saw her and mm -hmm. you saw her walk up to herself and then lay down into herself. Yeah. So it sounds like you saw her spirit of an out of body experience or something like that coming back to the body. That's what it sounds like to me on the surface. That's the only thing that I can come up with. Um, I mean, she's not dead. She's very much alive today, but yeah, I literally watched her walk from the door to her bed and lay down into herself. And back then, I didn't know what an out-of-body experience was. I was just like a little kid. This wasn't something that I had heard of. Um, but yeah, I literally watched her just lay down into herself. It's really weird. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's weird. And it's... it's so we hear about out-of-body experiences on the show and people having such things and people even doing it on purpose, like they've learned how to actually do it. But I can't remember the, the times that I've heard somebody say that they witnessed an out-of-body experience, but it wasn't theirs. It was like they were sitting there and they watched somebody literally walk back into their body. That's interesting. And I think that might be a first for the show. Really? I think so. I mean, maybe I'm the, the audience knows the show better than I do. So maybe they'll remember something that I'm not remembering right now. If anybody else has ever had that happen, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, me too. It's haunted me like my whole life. I've never seen anything like that before. And it just kind of stuck with me. Um, the next 
kind of crazy thing was uh, another UFO. I was about 14 years old, and I had a boyfriend that I would sneak out and see. He lived in a neighborhood really close to mine, and this was also in Texas. Um, the neighborhood that we lived in was pretty well known for UFOs, but I didn't know that back then, <laughs> but I found out real quick. Um, I did sneak out to see him one night and on my way home, um, I looked up, I loved looking at the stars out there. It's so dark that you can see like shooting stars and there's actually a galaxy that you can see with the naked eye. It just kind of looks like a blur, but it's amazing out there. Um, but I looked up and there was like a dark triangle that was blocking out the stars and it's probably about maybe 20 feet above the trees if that like it was really close it was like a very smooth surface there were no lights it made absolutely no sound and I could almost feel like somebody was watching me from there and like they did not have good intentions and I had just goosebumps from head to toe I ran so fast to my house. I don't think I've ever run that fast in my life. I'm not a runner. I never snuck out again. If you don't want your kids sneaking out, <laughs> that's probably the cure right there. <laughs> um, and then the next day, actually, my mom, had her and her girlfriend were on a bowling league. And they came home from like a little bowling tournament. And as we were all getting out of the car, my mom points up to the sky and she goes, what is that? I said, what are you talking about? And I look and there's like four triangle craft just kind of moving along. You know, they're floating over the house. Um, they were higher up, though, kind of like where an airplane would be. And then right behind them, there were a couple of jets and then there was a helicopter. And so they were chasing these four triangle craft over the house and had we not looked up and seen that we never would have known we would have just thought there were airplanes up there we never would have seen these things um so my mom actually has seen those and there were she told me that the fbi came out and was talking to people um on a ranch that was out there about these ufos because they reported them it was crazy (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean it's that definitely sounds crazy i mean so when you say it was they were chasing was it like a f- full-on right. like fast like almost like a like a, it would be like a police chase in the sky kind of thing like it, was it aggressive looking as far as the maneuvers they were doing or was it because because sometimes people you know might say they're chasing but maybe they were just following it might it, they might have just been following because it didn't look aggressive i mean it was pretty quick but it wasn't like aggressive Okay. I mean, cause I, we have, you know, there's like different, you know, planes and stuff that we have now that we know about that are tr- uh, triangle in shape. I, do you know if it might've been something like that? Or do you think this was something kind of a little different, you know? Cause it's like sometimes people say triangle, but they're, th- it was really like a pyramid shape, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say it's possible that they were, uh, ours. Because this isn't, I mean, it's something that we didn't know about back then, but, you know, anything's possible these days. So, yeah, I wouldn't put it past it being ours, but back then, you know, this was unheard of to me. Yeah. And we, and we've, we've had, you know, just recently within the past few years, uh, our own military coming out and saying that these things do exist. They don't know what they are. Um, you know, as far as UFOs go and, you know, we have video that has come out now showing that these things just pop up on the radar kind of thing. And then they're gone. Uh, we have video of them doing maneuvers that are impossible. Uh, you know, I think it was, I forget how many feet it was, but I think it was like, Oh shoot. I forget now, but you know, just covering great amount of distances in like half a second, you know? And so, oh, yeah. you know, we, we don't know what they are, uh, at least as far as they're telling us, as far as our government's telling us, they don't know what it is. Uh, recently they've come out and said they have, uh, some kind of craft that was not built on earth. And that's what they said. Uh, you know, so 
we definitely know that they're they're dealing with things that they're not familiar with. Uh, they're aware of it, but they don't know what's going on. And uh, it, so it could really go either way when it comes to a sighting like that. It could have been something that they, maybe they're working on, like a Bob Lazar kind of thing, or maybe it's you know something totally extraterrestrial and it's just you know alien to this earth. Mm-hmm. I feel like the one that I saw at night wasn't ours. It didn't look exactly like the ones that we saw the next day. If that makes sense. No. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to me. If you saw two different crafts, you saw two different crafts. I mean, uh, I'm a big supporter of Bob Lazar. I mean, people who follow me on Instagram know I have uh, some of, you know, what we'll call his artwork in my studio. And uh, like he says, when he was working in S4, he saw more than one type of craft and not just like, hey, this one's... um, cigar shaped and this one's triangle shaped like he's talking like totally different and i got this imagery in my head i don't know if he said this or just the way he said it made me think of it this way but i started feeling like what he was saying is that some of the craft that he saw there he didn't see much but some of the crafts that he did see there that he wasn't working on almost the way he tells it reminded me that made me feel like it was almost like the craft was organic. It had it, the the craft itself was some yeah. kind of biological craft, and it's just trippy, very trippy. I get that feeling too, and it's so weird. Like I said, that the craft that I saw, it, it's almost like it was looking at me. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. know how to explain it, but I think he's absolutely a hundred percent correct on that. Yeah, and you know, people have said that on the show before too, and that's what I, I love about doing this show is that I learn a lot from people that are on the show because you guys are the ones experiencing the stuff. I'm the one gathering the information. I get to hear your stories, and that's something that I, I hear a lot from people. Is that not a lot, but I've heard it before where you know they experienced a UFO and they had this distinct feeling that what they were looking at in the sky was very aware that it that they were aware of it. Yes, that was exactly the feeling that I got. Um, it knew that I knew it was there. <laughs> and I don't know if it was the craft itself, if, if it was something operating within the craft. Um, but definitely, I, you know how it feels when somebody's looking at you. I could feel somebody looking at me. You know? It was a very creepy feeling. And and like I said, at 14, me never sneaking out again, that was huge. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big deal for me. <laughs> I believe it. Um, so let's see. The, I guess the older I get, the weirder these things get. Um, when I was about 20 years old, I was pregnant with my daughter, my oldest daughter. And we lived in an apartment in Indiana. And this is such a short experience and I don't have a whole lot of details. It's just, it was just odd and I've never forgotten it. Um, we lived in a very small apartment. Our first bed together was just, you know, a a box spring and a mattress on top of it. Um, I remember I woke up because I was lying with my legs on the bed and my top half kind of slumped over onto the floor. And I was like, how on earth did I get like this? And I I started to correct myself, um, cover up with the blanket. And in the kitchen, I had kind of like a nightlight. So I could see like the glow from the kitchen shining through the bedroom door. And in the bedroom door, two two little grays (laughs) walked through the door. One of them, and I can't remember if it was telepathically or if they actually verbally said it, but I heard the word sleep and I was out. And that's literally all I can remember from that. Uh, Wow. Wow. The fact that I was pregnant really creeps me out. I had pregnancy issues with the whole pregnancy. She was actually due August 11th and born July 4th. So she was premature. Um, and you know, we've had issues, um, because of that through her whole life. She's got anxiety so bad. Um, 
And I don't know if it has something to do with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, you know, but I, I can imagine, right. uh, just, just being premature, I imagine has some kind of medical, uh, things that come with it, whether it's good or bad. Uh, and that's something that it's been on my mind recently with my daughter just recently being born as a preemie. I mean, and that, it wasn't terribly preemie, but she was born a month early. And so, uh, you know, it, we had to take her to the NICU. We brought her home and they had her t- had us take her back to the NICU because of complications. So uh, I, you think about those things. You think about, you know, what what's going on now that could affect her the rest of her life. And uh, so whether it's preemie for you that led to that or even what you experienced while you were pregnant, I mean, who knows? I mean, you just saw two grays walk through a door, you know, so you, there's no telling what kind of effect that could have on you or the baby if they did anything to you? I mean, I remember just in the short amount of time from when I saw them to when I was told to sleep, I was terrified. I mean, just you get goosebumps thinking about it. You get this weird feeling in the pit of your stomach, like what happened? And I've thought about getting like that regression therapy just to try to remember. I'm kind of scared. Like, to be honest with you, like, I don't know if I want to remember what happened, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, I totally, I, I get that for sure. Uh, and there's, that's to each their own kind of thing. I mean, there's a lot of times people, they, they want that regression therapy and sometimes people don't, uh, they're too scared to remember. And I, I totally understand that either way. Um, but, uh, if you do do regression therapy, just make sure it's something you really want to do before you do it because there's no going back afterwards. Right. Well, that kind of leads me to my next experience um, because this is the one that really, really makes me want to get the regression therapy. In 2006, <laughs> we, okay, okay. In 2006, we lived in a small house with two kids at this point. Um, I worked in the bookstore that I work in now, and I listened to Coast to Coast AM. It was just something that I liked to do. It was something to do because I worked night shift. So I'm used to being, I was used to being awake until like the wee hours of the morning. Um, and so was my ex-husband. Like he's, he was my husband at the time. We're not together anymore. Um, but basically I came home from work one night. Um, and that night I had drank a bunch of coffee and, you know, it was a, a fairly decent night. I get home, he's playing video games, um, he stopped, and we just kind of went in the room to talk for a little while. And as we're laying in the bed and he's telling me about his video game rage, and he's super excited, like he's got adrenaline, you know, he shouldn't. Oh, he shouldn't just fall asleep in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> If you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. He was in the middle of a sentence and he just kind of dozed off like he was narcoleptic. And before I could think, wow, that was weird. You know how when you used to turn off the old analog TV, how it would be like staticky and everything would just kind of black out? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what happened, but like in my head. Um, it was like somebody turned off my head. And then I felt like just super cold. Um, I felt a vibration and it was like, not just physical. You could just feel it through your entire being. I don't even know how to describe everything that happened to me in that moment. But I do remember um, that lasted for maybe 10 seconds. And then I can vaguely remember seeing a face and that face it it was similar to a gray but it wasn't gray it had really really big eyes they were blue um a very small mouth a small nose similar shape to a gray but more humanoid uh whoo sorry this the beings that I remember told me something bad was going to happen. Not any time like soon, but within my lifetime. 
they told me that I needed to learn how to grow plants underground without sunlight. Um, oh, I feel sick just thinking about this. They said something really bad was going to happen. Um, and that's part of the conversation that I remember. There's bits and pieces that come and go, but they also told me we are here. We are real. And we want you to know that because I was going through a point in my life where I was doubting things, um, like angels and I, I was kind of, um, lost, I guess you could say. <laughs> I didn't really know what to believe. Um, and then this happened. But after my conversation with them, um, I had that black kind of fade out moment again, the cold vibration. Um, and then I came to, I, I don't know how else to put it. I, I came to in my room and I hit my husband at the time. I hit him. I said, wake up. <laughs> uh, you are never going to believe what just happened to me. And he kind of groggily came to and was like, what? And I said, you know, I explained what just happened. And he laughed at me. He said, you just fell asleep and had a bad dream. <laughs> I said, no, I'm pretty sure that wasn't a dream. <laughs> um, I laid there for another three, maybe four hours, shaking, um, trying to go to sleep. But I couldn't. Like, I, I was terrified. After this experience, I developed a severe phobia of the sky. Like, if I went outside and I tried to look at the stars like I almost always did every night, I would get dizzy. I would feel like I was going to throw up. I would start shaking. I would have a panic attack. And it just kind of ruined the whole sky watching thing for me um, after that happened. Oh, I'm shaking just thinking about it. <laughs> um, I didn't get a sense of evil or malevolence from them at all, but it still scares me <laughs> to think about it. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, and, you know, one thing with that, and everything that they told you, did they happen to say it was going to be 2020? Because it would make a lot of sense if it was this year, <laughs> you know? It, it would make a lot of sense. Um, they did not tell me when. They didn't tell me what. Um, and if they did, I sure as heck don't remember it. I just remember, like like I said, just bits and pieces that something bad was going to happen. Well, um, I, you know, I, I think that with this kind of situation that you went through, you probably would remember if they told you. Because it seems like whatever, whoever this is, has abilities that are way beyond us. And if they have the ability to do what they did do to you that you remember, I think they'd have the ability to make sure you remember what they tell you that's important. Because obviously they shared something with you that was important. They told you that you're going to need to learn how to plant plants underground with no sunlight. I mean, that's, you know, pretty out of, out of left field scary that you were remembering. So if they were going to tell you, Hey, you know, this is going to happen next week or in 2020, right around November 3rd, you know, you, you, you would remember these things. I would think, uh, yeah. it's, it's nerve wracking for somebody like me to sit here and hear you say it because, and maybe it's because it's 2020 at the time of this recording. And I, uh, I'm very, I have lots of heightened senses about what's going on in the world around us. But when you said that, I was just like, and something inside of me was almost like you were confirming, like amongst a lot of other things that happened throughout, you know, my weeks and months this year, there's been things throughout, you know, this year that have confirmed to me, hey, you need to prepare, you need to make sure, you know, you're doing what you got to do to take care of the family. And uh, I, I got that sense when you said that. So I don't know. But, uh, you know, yeah, I understand why it's upsetting. <laughs> I have definitely been taking the time to try to learn everything I can to survive whatever I possibly can. That's how serious I took them. Well, that's good. 
Uh, changed my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that it doesn't hurt to be taking survival serious. I've always thought that, and I think I'll always think that. It, the idea of living your entire life on this earth, so let's just say you live 70, 80 years on this earth, and you know the idea that you're going to go through 70, 80 years on this earth and nothing happens that's extreme is probably not the case. You know, our our grandparents went through crazy times, world wars, Nam, you know, like like we've been through wars, we've been through crazy crazy experiences. Our parents grew up in a time where, you know, the Cold War was a very real thing and, you know, they they went to school practicing hiding under desks like that's going to protect them from a nuclear war. And so like it, it, the idea of extreme not happening in your life is just well, it's ridiculous. So I'm a big fan of people preparing and making sure they take care of themselves. And uh, that warning that you received, uh, like I said, for me, it just it something inside. It was like a confirmation, you know, that was in 2006. Okay. Yeah. So they gave me plenty of warning for 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how how you done. how you doing on that? I mean, have you learned how to plant anything under the ground? Um, we've got some like grow lights and stuff like that, but now I have to kind of figure out, you know, if we don't have electricity, how do we get the grow lights to work? <laughs> you know, yeah. if the sun's blocked out, how do we get the stuff to work? You know, I'm trying to get all that stuff figured out, but yeah, I've been, I've been trying. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, but, uh, there's some stuff that I didn't put in the email that actually happened to me a lot more recently in 2015. Okay. And you're going to get a kick out of this. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I will. I'm getting a kick out of a lot of this stuff. <laughs> um, I had a really weird, and I'm just going to say dream for the sake of saying dream because I don't know how else to explain it. But during one of those times where I heard the whooshing noise, um, I had almost like a weird uh, dream experience where I connected with what I can only say is like real reality. Uh, I ended up at a table in a, like a bright room. It almost looked like an office and I was sitting at this table and these people that I had no idea who they were came in and they sat down around the table. And they started having having conversations about like machines and stuff, and I didn't I didn't understand any of it. And they said, "What are you guys talking about?" And I remember this gentleman looking at me, and he goes, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here yet. What are you doing here? You need to go back." Almost like concerned that I was there, and then I'm back in my room, <laughs> and it was so weird. Like I I don't feel like I was asleep but I don't know how else to describe that. So let me ask you a question with that. Did that person, um, well, not that person, but let me ask you this. Did you, in that moment, talking to that person with what you said, did you feel in that moment as if you were naturally supposed to be there? Like it was almost like, you know, a meeting of the minds and you were supposed to be there, but they said you weren't? I feel like... I feel like I knew that person in that moment. I knew who they were. I knew who all those people were, but I don't now. In this reality, I don't know who they were. I couldn't tell you. And I feel like, almost like it was a meeting that I will eventually be at, that I'm supposed to be there, but I wasn't supposed to be there in that moment, if that makes sense. Yeah, it actually does because what you just described to me almost made me feel like how I feel with dreams. So if I remember dreams, I know everybody remembers dream or everybody has dreams. I typically don't remember my dreams, but if I do remember my dreams, I'll remember it when I first wake up, I'll get out of bed, I'll kind of stumble towards the door and I'm rubbing my eyes, I'm stumbling down the hallway. About the time I hit the stairs and I'm thinking about this dream, by the time I hit the bottom of the stairs, I don't remember the dream. It's like it's just gone. And uh, that what you just described kind of makes me feel similar to the idea of me coming out of a dream state. Um, yeah. It, it's like you're not supposed to remember it, you know? Right. You're not supposed to remember 
being in, and it's almost like you're living a different life when you're asleep. And then when you wake up, you're not supposed to remember that life. But it's so hard for me to describe the feeling I got from being in this room with these people because it felt more, it's so weird. It felt more real than this. It felt like I was supposed to learn something from being here and then go back to that meeting. That's interesting. You know, what yeah. What you're talking about right now really makes me uh, feel matrixy, you know, like simulation kind of yeah. vibe. Uh, it, it really does. It, 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 it makes me feel like you you're you're somehow um i don't want to say uh, you're not plugging in it's like you're plugged in already and somehow you're unplugging from the matrix and almost at your own will if whatever's on the other side of the simulation is saying to you when you get there you're not supposed to be here and they sent keep sending you back it's almost like yeah. somehow you're unplugging and you don't even know how you're doing it please I tell don't. us your secrets <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> and that's kind of, yes, that's a very good way to describe it. Almost like being out of a matrix and then coming back in. Um, I do kind of feel like this is a simulation. I don't, I hate to say that, but I feel like, oh, who was it? I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they said uh, Elon Musk had said something about this being a simulation. And I was like, on board with that. I said, yes, absolutely. I, I agree. I've had so many glitches that how can this be real? You know, I've seen things that just don't make sense. Unless of course you're a sim in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I understand how you feel that way. I mean, if I went through the things you went through, I would think that this is a simulation as well. Uh, that would make sense to me. Now, let me ask you this. Earlier, you said about how you heard on this show about the idea of using the name of Jesus to rebuke whatever is going on, and it worked for you. How? And yeah. you may not have an answer to this, uh, and there is no wrong answer to this either. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I might have my own opinions on it, but you telling me an answer, it's all you. Um, how do you think that plays into the idea of a matrix? You know, like if the name Jesus. Uh, helps rebuke a an attack like that. Uh, is it something that would be programmed into the simulation as this character Jesus, or is it that maybe Jesus is the creator of the simulation? Uh, have you ever thought about that? I actually have. Um, I feel like maybe Jesus is maybe a programmer who, and if if this. Um, simulation or matrix thing is real. Maybe Jesus is a programmer. Maybe Jesus is a cheat code. Maybe Jesus, you know, is something that was put there to help people through bad situations in this matrix. Okay. So, um, Jesus, it, it, maybe, so what you're saying, Jesus might be like a programmer that is programming the path for people in inside the matrix? Possibly. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting talk right there. I, I, uh, I, I, I really enjoy having these kind of conversations with people. Uh, and you know, people know the show. They they listen to it. They know you know my traditional thought process on things. But I enjoy venturing outside my traditional thought processes and my be traditional beliefs to just explore thought. Uh, it's. It's very interesting when we go down this path. And you're right, Elon Musk did say things like that. And when he said that stuff, my ears perked up big time. And I started paying attention and started thinking about the idea of simulation a lot more. When a guy like that says that, either he's saying it because he has, he has an agenda to accomplish and he's lying on purpose, or he really believes that. And if he really believes that as one of the smartest guys on earth... Um, I'm going to listen and I'm going to think about it at least. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was raised uh, in a Baptist family. My grandfather was a Baptist preacher. So I've been to church. I've, I've seen both sides of the table. Um, I've been on both ends of the conversation. Um, 
yeah, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. But if that's the situation, then that's kind of how I feel about it. Like Jesus is maybe somebody that's in on the programming. And if we get to a point where we can't handle something and we say, Jesus, please help me, he's going to fix it. You know what I mean? Being abducted is terrifying. And maybe there are people out there who can't handle that. Maybe this is part of a, a test of some sort. And if you can't pass that test, Jesus takes over and saves you. You know? So what do you think the alien or uh i hate to even say alien right now but uh what do you think the abduction side of this is then so say we're we're on the simulation idea now we can venture outside that thought right but on the thought of simulation what do you think the abduction side of it is then is it like the beings the people the reality outside of this that is outside the matrix coming into the matrix to retrieve people for whatever reason and pull them out and then put them back or what? I mean, what are your thoughts? That's a possibility, but they also might be messengers trying to get us to figure some stuff out. Like, I don't know why if we were in a matrix, I don't know why we're here. Maybe they're telling people things to try to motivate them to figure it out. Maybe they are pulling people out of the matrix. Maybe they're, teachers of some sort i don't know then why are they doing butt stuff to people not just kidding <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question i don't know maybe we're in um a prison simulation a prison simulation holy crap holy mm-hmm. crap a prison simulation yeah. holy crap wow lesson, dude. maybe we did something wrong and this is a prison oh simulation. my gosh Oh, you just broke my brain wide open. <laughs> oh. I could talk about this stuff all night, but yeah. <laughs> wow. I uh, questioned that myself. Like, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> and how <laughs> good know. how good did we have it in a life outside of this simulation and that this is the punishment? Because like I'm looking around right. and I'm like, yeah, life isn't perfect, but I mean, it could be a lot worse. And you look at the homeless, you know, I got homeless people down the street from me. And so it's like, you know, they got it worse than me. So is that a worse sentence? Like they, 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 they really yeah. did something like maybe, maybe I just, you know, smoked a little weed in, in uh, Texas and they, they got mad at me or something, but you know, maybe the homeless guys down the street, they're the ones that freaking, you know, did something real dirty, you know, like they, they robbed the president or something. Absolutely. Um, my it's mom's trippy. looking at me like, Hey, I'm babysitting. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, let me go ahead and just tell you, I guess, the last experience I had so okay. I can get out there with the kiddo. <laughs> um, in 2015, I moved to Texas with my then boyfriend. Uh, we moved in with my mom and her girlfriend, um, kind of just trying to get back on our feet down there. And it's back in that neighborhood where it's pitch dark at night, you know, where I snuck out when I was 14 and saw the UFO. So for about 10 nights in a row, we tracked a ton of UFOs. Uh, there was one light that at about 10 p.m. would show up and it would just blink randomly out in space in different locations. Um, when that light would show up, you would then start to see little orange streaks that at first I thought, oh, wow, cool, it's a meteor shower. But meteors do not do 90 degree turns. Meteors do not go one direction and then another. These were not meteors. They were moving extremely quick, like a meteor. Okay. Not like an airplane, not like a satellite, which by the way, we could see tons of satellites too. I can definitely tell the difference between a satellite and an airplane in the upper atmosphere. (laughs) So we would see tons of those. There was one night where I was going for a walk down the street with him and I was looking at some constellations that were like right underneath the moon. And I saw a bright orange light and I was like, oh, wow, is that Mars? And I was getting out my, uh, I had an app on my phone that would tell you what stars are where. And I was about to look at it and the dang thing just blinked off. It just disappeared. And I grabbed his arm and I was like, did you see that? 
it just disappeared. Like I got excited. I was like, where did it go? And I started looking. I was like, there's no clouds. You can still see the other stars that were around it. Where is it? Just gone. And then, um, did he see it? There were other, Oh yeah, he saw it. Okay, good. Blinked off. Yeah. (laughs) Um, then there were, um, these, I didn't even know what you would call them. Just, I'm just going to call them lights. Lights that you would randomly see out of the corner of your eye that kind of looked like a smudge. Okay. And for a while, I just thought I was, you know, had something in my eye or, you know, just a light that didn't look quite right out of the corner of your eye. But one night I just looked straight over the house and I saw one of these smudges just right in front of me. And it was almost as if somebody took that light and in a, like a paint shop, just smudged it across the sky and then it disappeared. And I don't know if it's ball lightning or what, but it, I had never seen anything like that before. It was very cool. Um, but I think the, the hardest experience I had down there was involving death. Okay. This is a hard story for me to tell. <laughs> Um, him being a grown man needed me to walk him through the living room at night to go outside to smoke. You could feel something in that living room. And this is not something that I ever felt when I was a a teenager living there. Um, the house was always cheery and, and just nice to live in. Like I loved it. Um, but it had a very ominous feeling in that room and he literally would grab me and hold my arm to walk through that room to go outside this went on for maybe a month and then uh, one morning we were asleep and my mom started banging on the bedroom door and I thought oh shit there's a tornado I got to get up, you know, like why else would my mom be banging on the door like this? And, uh, we got up and she said, Margie had a heart attack. Get up. Margie had a heart attack. And so we go in the living room and she's trying to do CPR. She's already called 911 and Margie had passed away. And uh, it just so happens that she was laying right in the spot where you could feel this heaviness in the house. Um, She passed away right there. And, oh, God, (laughs) there's a smell that you can smell. Uh, It's almost like a, I've never smelt a bad, sweet smell like this before, but it was like a sweet smell but it was horrible um but that was a a month-long experience that we had just feeling this ominous feeling right there and then just for her to just pass away there I think we felt death in that house (sighs) and (laughs) now that I know that smell I've actually smelt it numerous times since then, before and after, uh, like a pet or something would pass away. Um, I think it's the smell of death. And wow, this, this does not something I'll never forget. <laughs> it was so. At the time, I couldn't connect it, but the more I think back, the more I'm like, man, that was, that was death. You can just feel it. And I've never known a grown man that needed to be walked through a living room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's unique. Let's put it that way. Um, I mean, 
you can get spooked out and stuff. And uh, like, for instance, at nighttime, when it gets dark out, all windows have their their blinds closed in my house. All of them. I do not like having any windows open when it's dark out. I feel like a fish in the fishbowl. Um, you know, I just I, if I can't see outside, I don't want them to be able to see inside, whether it's a person or something a little creepier. Uh, but to not be able to walk through the living room. And I know the urge, I know the urge you have when you need a smoke, you need a freaking smoke and, uh, to need yeah. somebody to walk you through the living room so you can go get that fix. Um, that's, that's pretty unique. It was terrifying. And it's so weird. Like you didn't see anything. You, I mean, it, it just was a living room, you know, you could have the lights on, but still feel like this ominous, heavy feeling. It was right by the window. Uh, you know, I left out a detail. We had a couch that was positioned a certain way in the living room. The furniture was positioned different in the living room. Uh, I think the day before that she passed away, we rearranged the furniture to where her chair was actually right That's there interesting. before she passed away. Well, let me ask you this because, and this is kind of like, um, this is going to be a question that kind of covers the entire thing we just talked about a little bit. And I know you got to get moving here. So it's probably a good time to, uh, to ask you this. Uh, before we started recording, you had mentioned that you're nervous about talking about this because you're afraid by talking about it, things are going to start kicking up again in your life. Are, one, are you in a period right now where things have kind of been chilling out? And also, uh, how do you feel about that now that you went through an hour of talking about it? I'm still a little nervous um, because some of this stuff, like I said, has been kind of scary. Um, I feel like a lot of it is connected. I just don't know how. I'm still trying to put the pieces together. Um, but if something happens, it happens. It'll probably happen regardless. The The period in my life right now, things have kind of calmed down, but I still have, I want to call them paranormal experiences on occasion. Uh, the place I work at is totally haunted. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> um, and I have seen some things in my home, but I'm not scared of them. Um, I got sick one time and I thought my daughter was standing at the foot of the bed. <laughs> And cause she's three, you know, she'll come in the room and Hey mom, you know, hold me, you know, tuck me in. I want to sleep in here. I'm scared or whatever. So I was expecting to see my daughter, but I saw an old lady with a red blanket and then she disappeared. An I old lady to... with a red blanket. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was like, uh, like a quilt. Um, okay. and I think she was trying to take care of me because I got sick like a day later. Well, I don't get any scary feelings from that. So. Interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, everything you've said, I think I would freak me out if it happened to me. Everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I've gotten used to some of this stuff. Like, right. And that, just so much you, you could probably relate with me then because uh, I say the same thing about the show. I mean, I don't like, I can talk to people all day long about their experiences. It doesn't really affect me. And it's probably because I've been through these kind of things for the last four years of my life, interviewing people on a weekly basis that you kind of just get numb to it where it doesn't freak you out as much as it might have in the beginning. And it's probably the same thing with you. You've gone through this stuff so much that it's like, ah, uh, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I Some of the stuff I don't even think of, like I was telling, uh, actually a friend of mine that told me about your show is who I was talking to. And he's like, you should message him. <laughs> I was like, why? And he goes, because that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that okay. friend because I'm very grateful. <laughs> yeah. I won't mention his name, but he comes and talks to me about this stuff all the time. Yeah. He knows who he is. <laughs> Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show, but if you enjoyed it, the best thing you can do to help this show grow is just to share it with people who you know will be interested in similar topics or you find it fascinating and other people will find it fascinating as well. And you just share it with pretty much anybody. Text it to people. Take the link right now and text it to everybody in your contacts. I don't care how you share the show. Just share it. And until next week, friends, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free. But first, it'll piss you off. Bye.
he's feeling Probably like you I'm just drifting Probably right beside you All the abyss Control from afar What did we miss? Now we're left with the scars We love the lows but hate the highs Is the other side of the sun With all this glow it's hard to hide The lows, but hey, the high is the other side of the sun. The dark is dark, it's hard to find. The light is bright. Everybody wanna preach a happy median I see they dopamine fix come from media Night spirit getting booked on Expedia So search a light long out of medium I should have been taught Sleepwalk through life but being woke is an insult They should have been caught They wanna slut it in fear by trying to not on the asphalt We love the lows but hate the highs Here's the other side of the sun With all this glow it's hard to hide It's bright, it's bright Love the lows, but hate the high Is the other side of the sun Love the dark, it's hard to find The light is bright Masking from elites Got us attaching what is free Now we're rationing our needs For our soul Yeah We're not fasting from belief The smell of sharpies right the streets Looting liabilities Like it's gold Atomic number 79 Gucci, Prada, Jordan High Sniff that line, it's on the house Till your soul The ones that keep us locked for the felony time Or the ones that fund the dollars for the BLM sign Y'all ain't really doing what y'all supposed to Y'all just follow suit like the rest do We love the lows, but hate 